Hey guys, Lewis Cahill. I'm here at the uh, Bonefish and Tarpon Trust booth with Aaron Adams. Aaron, thanks for taking time to chat with us. Thanks for giving us the coverage. Absolutely, man. Can you tell our viewers a little bit about BTT? Sure. BTT is the world's only group that's concerned with the conservation of bonefish, tarpon, and permit. Uh, we've been around since 1998. We support the research to learn about bonefish, tarpon, permit, what makes them tick, and what are the habitats that are important. And then we take that information and we work with resource management agencies to actually get the protections in place so the uh, fisheries are still here in 10, 20, 30 years. That's great. What projects are you working on right now? Well, one of the really exciting ones is that the world of genetic analysis is really just in the past five years made leaps and bounds. Totally. So we're starting a project now which gives anglers a perfect excuse to travel and fish. <laughs> we're going fishing for tarpon. That's what we need. <laughs> and uh, we're collecting scale, a scale from a tarpon or a small fin from a bonefish from anywhere that you catch them. Uh, so we can look at the population structure. And that, that will let us know, for example, if the bonefish in the Keys are related to bonefish in the Bahamas or Cuba or Belize. Nice. Yeah, because they're little larvae after they hatch, they float around for 50, 60 days. Right. And so then that will allow us to kind of go work backwards for the Florida Keys, figure out why there's been a collapse in the bonefish fishery. Right. Is it a local issue or is it because they got fished out somewhere uh, upstream? And those, you know, those babies aren't coming downstream. There's still so much about bonefish and tarpon that are a mystery to this, isn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a lot like fishing for them. Yeah. Just when you think you've got it figured out, yeah. they tell you you don't. So we are just figuring out where bonefish spawn. We know that they go offshore to spawn. Uh, we've got some excellent video footage, which will get to you of 15,000 bonefish in a whirling tornado getting ready to go offshore to spawn. I'd like to see that, yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, <laughs> they don't eat because their mines are another thing. But they'll travel 70 miles to get to a spawning spot, and they go out in the thousands of feet of water to spawn at night. So not your typical behavior. Yeah, so that means that conservation, say for an island in the Bahamas, is not just the flats. You also have to worry about the migratory pathway and then that spawning location. So it's not so different from salmon. Right. as far as protecting that whole life cycle. So to put it in a nutshell, the more we understand about the species and their behavior, the better we can protect them. Exactly. You can't protect what you don't know. And it's perfect. all about the future of the fishery. That's awesome. We'll provide a link where you can get in touch with these guys, get some sampling kits. They're doing great work to protect our saltwater species, and they need your help. Thanks very much for your time. Thank Aaron. you very much. Stay tuned to Geek and Gasoline for more coverage from IFTV.